Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a green-white landfall deck featuring a Murasa Root Grazer, the 2-mana two 2-3 two, beast with Vigilance that can tap to put a basic land card from our hand onto the battlefield, and it can also tap to return target basic land we control to its owner's hand. So the Root Grazer is a great way to keep enabling landfall even in the late game, as we can just keep picking up our basic lands again. Now because we're playing the Root Grazer and we're incentivized to pick up our lands again, we're not necessarily going to hit a ton of land drops, so we're not going to get up to 6 lands very often to enable Skewed Swarm, which is why we're not playing that card, but we do still have some very powerful landfall cards in the deck, including a Lotus Cobra, the 2 mana 2 1 that makes 1 mana of any color whenever land enters a battlefield under our control. We've got Fearless Fledgling, the 2 mana 1 1 Griffin, that picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter and flying until end of turn whenever we enable landfall. And then at 4 mana we also have Felidar Retreat, the 4 mana enchantment, which can either make a 2 2 cat beast creature token or can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, and those creatures also gain vigilance until end of turn. And then our last landfall creature is Kazandu Mammoth, the 3 mana 3 3 that gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn whenever we enable landfall, but we can also play it as a tapped land, Kazandu Valley. And then we also have one landfall equipment with a Skyclave Pickaxe, which for one mana we can play and attach to a creature we control, and then it equips for two and a green afterwards, and then landfall gives the creature plus two plus two until end of turn, so it's kind of like the Kazandu Mammoth's ability, but on an equipment. So those are all the landfall cards in the deck, but we do have some other synergies as well, since we do have a lot of plus one plus one counters in the deck, with cards like Fearless Fledgling, we've got Felidar Retreat and Oran Reef Ooze as well. We're also playing with Conclave Mentor, which says whenever one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature we control, we can put an additional plus one plus one counter on that creature instead. And when the Mentor dies, we also gain life equal to its power. So the Mentor is especially powerful alongside a Fledgling or a Felidar Retreat. And then the interaction in this deck consists of Inscription of Abundance, which we can play for 2 mana as an instant, putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature. We can either gain X life, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, or target creature we control finds target creature we don't control. And of course we've got some very large creatures in this deck, especially after enabling landfall, like the Kazandu Mammoth or the Fearless Fledgling. And then we can also kick the Inscription of Abundance for Twin and Green, so for 5 mana total we get to choose all 3 modes, and especially with Lotus Cobra generating additional mana it's not too difficult to kick Inscription of Abundance even if we don't have a ton of lands in play. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana besides the 4 copies of Skycliff Pickaxe, we also have 2 copies of Vastwood Fortification, a 1 mana instant that can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature, or we can play it as a tapped land of Vastwood Thicket, so this also synergizes quite nicely with the Mentor, potentially putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a creature at instant speed. Then at 2 mana we've got our Fledgling, Cobra, Mentor and Root Grazer, all as 4 offs. And then at 3 mana, besides Kazandu Mammoth, we also have the full playset of Oran Reef Ooze, which is especially synergistic if we get a Felder Retreat going, as Ooze is a 3 mana 2-2 two -two that when it enters the battlefield can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, and whenever the Ooze attacks we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so this can potentially double all the counters on our creatures that we got from the Felder Retreat, and of course synergizes quite nicely with the Conclave Mentor as well. And then topping off our curve, besides Retreat, we also have two copies of Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, a 5 mana star star, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, and non-token creatures we control are forest lands in addition to their other types. So this does a few different things. First off, Ashaya's power and toughness is basically equal to the number of lands plus the number of creatures we control, or non-token creatures I should say. And then Ashaya also means that every non-token creature we play in the future will also enable landfall because they enter the battlefield as forests, so that's also very powerful with our various landfall synergies. And then going over the mana base, we do need a decent amount of basic lands that we can pick up again with our Root Grazer, so we've got 5 Plains and 5 Forests, alongside 4 Fabled Passage, which can enable landfall twice in one turn, and can also search up those basic lands that we can then pick up again with our Root Grazer. And then we also have 4 copies of the Green-White Pathway, and 2 copies of Temple of Plenty which lets us scry one but enters battlefield tapped. And then of course we also have our 4 copies of Kazandu Mammoth and the 2 fortifications which we can potentially play as tapped lands as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Can maybe use the Root Grazer to ramp into a turn three retreat. So we typically want to hold our basic lands in hand as long as possible when we have Root Grazer to keep the option of maybe putting a basic in play with the Root Grazer itself. And I don't mind drawing an extra forest there. Mentor I'll definitely keep. So turn two, Root Grazer, turn three, Retreat, and then I can keep the Failed Passage until after we play Retreat. Opponent on the Life Gain deck. So I wouldn't mind drawing an extra land. But we can still use the Fable Passage to play the Retreat next turn if needed. Alright, so Glass Casket's gonna deal with our Root Grazer instead. So, change of plans. Picked up an Inscription. So we'll just play Ooze here, I think. And then next turn we've got a few options between Mentor plus Inscription or Play Retreat. Alright, second casket deals with ooze as well. Bone slowly inching closer towards 27 life, which is when a speaker becomes scary. So I might have to use my inscription here to kill the speaker at instant speed before they gain too much life. But we'll see here. Don't have to do it right away. Gonna be Heliot Sun Crowned, which is an active creature here. Opponent just passes. So I could use my inscription to fight a speaker, but then my opponent can just use Alsei to protect it. So it's not that simple. I might just use the fortification to grow Mantrop to a 4 4 here. Could have also opted to save the fortification as an extra land drop for a retreat. Picked up a Kazanu Mammoth for the turn. Yeah, I think I gotta play it slow here. Just play Root Grazer. And then probably just play this tapped. And next turn I get to play Retreat. Make a token with landfall, thanks to the passage maybe. Can use a root grazer too, to pick up a land again. Linden, Steadfast Queen. That is a problem. So I definitely have to use the inscription here. Question is... What creature do I target? I can just fight Linden. Photon protects with the Alsade. But then I can at least block the speaker. And killing Linden also reduces the most amount of devotion. So they can attack with Heliot, but the speaker's probably not gonna attack. But that does put my opponent to 26, which is scarily close to 27. Nah, drawing the Fable Passage is nice. So let's see here. Can play Fable Passage. Making a token. And then I can attack with the Root Grazer. Do I send in the Mentor as well? Yeah, maybe I should. 
just to make sure we get our opponent's life total lower. And then the Fable Passage can potentially enable landfall at instant speed, and with the Mentor we can put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on all our creatures. And then the Root Grazer can pick up a land again as well. Opponent's about to take it. Yeah, I think I'm still fetching here. And we'll get another Plains. And then I could pick up a land now. I think I just wait and do it end of turn. So Healy does get to hit me. But that's alright. Hallowed Priest to draw. Take six. And we can pick up a lance. A Lotus Cobra to draw. So I can play Cobra and then Forest putting counters everywhere. And then, thanks to Vigilance, I get to attack. And my opponent does have to block with at least one creature. They can give a lifelink to their blocking creature as well with Heliod. And they're gonna double block the Beast. Interesting. And Chump Mentor. Alright, that works for me. So they will end up losing their Devotion too here, so while they might have a lot of plus one plus one counters on Heliot, it's no longer going to be a creature. And then the Root Grazer can pick up a land now, I think. I guess there was no real reason to do it main phase. Opponent still one Devotion shorts, and yeah, opponent explodes. So very close game here against the Mono White life gain deck, and the synergy between Retreat and Mentor definitely coming in big. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. We have the combo of Mentor and Fledgling, which is great. A little bit far from casting Retreat and Ashaya, but if we find a Lotus Cobra or just more lands, we'll be okay. And I'll keep a forest on top. Usually want to hold forest in hand in case we draw a root grazer, but I don't think it's going to matter in this game. But I guess I'll still play my pathway first. And then play fledgling. Next turn I get to go mentor into fable passage and make this into a 5-5. Put it on mono blue. Into a Thassa's Oracle, alright. Some sort of devotion deck. I'm gonna stick to the plan. Get another planes. Next turn this could make it up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Inscriptions and other three counters. So I could smack my point for 10, but gotta respect the bounce spell as well here. Picked up Lotus Cobra, which could be helpful. Although I could just play Retreat, 
which is probably better here. Although I guess if they do have a bounce spell for the Fledgling, I would rather go Cobra replay Fledgling. We'll see if they have a response. And I'll attack with both. Although I don't really intend to pump the Mentor here into open mana. Alright, opponent takes 7 down to 8. We'll just pass. And they had an Omen of the Sea. So this could be like a Nyx Lotus combo deck trying to make a ton of mana with a Lotus and then untap it with cards like Corridor Monitor to keep making more mana. But if they just tap out for Lotus, they're dead on board. Arcanist Owl can find Lotus and Ants for Devotion. Finds an Altar of the Pantheon, all right. So if I draw a land, I can kill them, but I don't even have to use the inscription now. All right, that'll do. Green mana can even play this kicked for what it's worth. So put the counters here. I'll gain life and these fight. And that's game. So yeah, the aggressive start of Fledgling plus Mentor can apply a ton of pressure right away. So if they don't have any removal spells at the ready, they're going to be in trouble. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand, if we can find another land or two. Cobra can ramp into retreat on turn three, hopefully, and then we can take it from there. Opponent on blue-green with a turn to symbiote, so mutate deck. Found an Ashaya, which isn't the most useful card right now, but could be useful later. Aha, uh -huh, opponent's playing the Scute Swarm Mutate deck. Oh, there's a land at long last. So I can play Cobra. And play Felder Retreat. And then we would love to draw more lands. And they've got the Shore Shark to mutate onto the Swarm. Can bounce the Snake. So I can play Cobra, play Temple, play Retreats. And then probably just put counters everywhere. And keep land on top. Next turn I can play Pickaxe, play land, play Ashaya. Double Shark, alright. So they get to bounce two creatures now. Although they still don't have any good attacks. And they are missing their land drops. So let's see here. I can play Cobra, play lands, play Ashaya. 
I mean, whatever I play here is probably getting bounced, is the thing. But at least the Shia means future creatures also enable landfall. And then I probably just start making tokens. And then a Shaya can maybe put counters everywhere. Or I can first make tokens and then with the mana from the two Cobras. I'll play another Cobra which can then put counters everywhere. That wasn't a bad turn, all things considered. Ashaya definitely enabling some powerful stuff. Cobra into Fabled Passage, alright. They need one more mana to mutate Sterix, so at least we can dodge that bullet. But a Great Horn, still quite strong here, can bounce two things. I'm surprised they bounced a Shia actually, because that gives us more landfall triggers. So our opponent's very close to generating Great Horns with uh, each landfall trigger here. Because remember, this is still that uh, Skewed Swarm from the beginning of the game. And wow, they actually have another Great Horn. So they get to make their first copy of the Great Horn. And they get to bounce a bunch more stuff. So all of a sudden, our entire board vanished and my opponent starts making three fours so that was quite a turn for my opponent and a gilded goose for good measure all right let's see if we can strike back Play a Shaya, play Cobra is going to be my turn. And then we'll just make more tokens. And then we get to play the Ooze as well. And then the Ooze will put a counter on. Probably doesn't matter too much. Cobra. And we can equip a pickaxe, because why not? One's gonna chump, keep their Great Horn engine alive, and we'll see what nonsense they can do this turn. They probably have a Styrix in hand that they're waiting to mutate. Great Horn number three. Yeah, I think we lose this game. We need some evasive creatures here, but uh, there's no fledgling in sight.
Can maybe hope they end up decking. Although it's unlikely. All right, the uh, game somehow didn't crash. The sound seems to be half gone, but uh, yeah, we're pretty dead here. All right, not bad. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, we'll keep this. Probably holding Mammoth as a land since we can use the extra landfall triggers. And then for now, can go Cobra into Cobra, play Mammoth, play Fledgling. Ooh, Fabled Passage. I think I still keep the Passage for next turn and just play Fledgling now. And I'll offer the trade. Next turn I can empty my hand and Passage will give us a couple extra landfall triggers. Primal Mites kills Cobra. And then I might want to put the Pickaxe on Cobra here. Or I can get the guaranteed damage in. Uh, yeah, maybe I should just go for the guaranteed damage. And then I'm fine fetching now. Because next turn we've got another land lined up. Questing Beasts hits for four. Mammoth, not bad.
There's also an argument for just holding the Mammoth for next turn. So I'm guaranteed to enable Landfall again. But it is an extra threat my opponent has to deal with. Alright, come on, land. A root Grazer can pick up land next turn. And my opponent concedes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Just need to pick up a land or two. Opponent on the green whites, and they turn to Caryatids. I guess I'll play my Root Grazer, so next turn I can technically play an Ooze. Rada. So opponent on a 3 or 4 color landfall deck. Could be the Omnath deck. Shia. Yeah, really could have used an extra land here. Take three from Rada. Another Karyatids. A Lotus Cobra. Alright, so I can play Cobra, pick up lands, play lands. And I think I just play Mentor. 5-5 five, five, Ooze. There's Omnath. Which we can now maybe take out with the inscription. And a Florahedron. A Rada attacks. Well, for being stuck on two lands, we're at least making use of these landfall triggers. So let's see here. Yeah, I think we pick up lands. Play lands. And then I can inscription twice, maybe once putting counters on Mentor itself. And then I get to attack. What if I put counters on the Cobra? Three counters, so five, four, attack with all, gets more counters. Hmm, maybe that's a little risky, because they can jump with the Florahedron to prevent dying. And I really need to take out Omnath, I think. So yeah, let's just attack with these two. See what they do. Put on chumps. And then we'll fight. And then next turn the Ooze can also maybe put a counter somewhere else before we attack. Opponent passes, intending to use the pump effect on Rada, but we don't have to play into it. So instead I'll probably just play a Felidar Retreat this turn. 
So Yarada could get plus 5, plus 5, grow up to an 8-8. Eight, eight. I guess I can still attack into that. Since Rada's not going to have first strike. Yeah. But I'll still play retreat. This is just a chum block. Point falls to three. End of turn I can pick up a land again to enable landfall for next turn. On math number two. Into a fable passage. Uh oh, this could be bad. Into Genesis Ultimatum. Yeah, that's the worst case scenario here. Gotta dodge Ugin Spare Dragon. There's Ugin Spare Dragon. And yeah, this game looks pretty over now. Minus three keeps my retreat in play, but that's not gonna matter. I guess I just play Ooze. Do not ignore my draconic talents. All right, what can we do here? Can play Ooze, put counter on the token, play a land, attack Ugin. I'm surprised uh, they took it. Opponent did nothing that turn. If they had just chumped, they could minus four Ugin to clear my board. Recovery for Fable Passage. Another Genesis Ultimatum. Maybe they didn't have the right colors of mana to cast it, so they needed Omnath to stay alive. Eh, that should do it. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Play Mammoth as a land here. Turn to probably playing Cobra. Can ramp into turn three retreats. Although we'll see here, because if we don't draw lands, retreats not all that exciting. Opponent ramping with Haven, picked up Root Grazer. So I guess this turn I'll just go Root Grazer plus Fledgling. Play Fledgling first. And then the Root Grazer will allow me to pick up a land again to enable landfall.
beanstalk giants for more ramp. An extinction event could be pretty painful here, so hopefully they don't have that card. So what am I doing here? Yeah, I guess I'll play pickaxe. Equipping... Think Root Grazer. Play Fortification. Play Ooze. Which at least doesn't die to Extinction Events. Put Counter on itself, that's probably fine. And attack for 9. And then... End of turn, I can still pick up a basic land again. Oh, it's gonna be a Garrick Cursed Huntsman. Makes two wolves. You're not scared of dogs, are you? So... Yeah, probably doesn't hurt to pick up a land, because I can still put it... in play using the Root Grazer itself if we draw another land. Picked up Mentor, so that works out. I can play Mentor, play land, fledgling flies. And then the fledgling can kill Garrick. And these can go face. Yeah, this seems fine. Right, just chum blocks and trace for Cobra. And we'll pass. Another Garrick. But now they seem dead on board since the Root Grazer picks up a land, Fledgling flies over and kills him. And this also doesn't quite do it. Alright, so we got to see the deck in action in a variety of matchups. Losing to the four-color Omnath pile is not too surprising. And then we almost managed to get there against the Mutate deck, but they managed to almost crash the game before we managed to get in the last points of damage. But uh, yeah, overall the deck's not too bad, and it's a nice mix of the Landfall archetype and the plus one plus one counter archetype. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.